guys, I'm Juliana, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to share with you my 10 favorite books of 2021. I'm going to be ranking them to the least favorite to the most favorite. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to talk about two honorable mentions. So, beginning with number 10. In number 10, I have Persuasion by Jane Austen. Last year was a year where I made some reading projects and participated in some reading projects. And one of them, one of them was a reading through all the works by Jane Austen, or the most of them. I still have some books that I still have to read, like Mansfield Park and some others that, that aren't finished. Of those that I read, I liked a lot of Persuasion. This is a story about, about a woman, I think she is in her mid-twenties. For to synthesize, the story is about a woman who was enamored by um, a man, but when she was younger, she refused him. And then some years pass and they reunite and she begins to doubt herself because she was convinced by a friend that at the time it wasn't a good choice for her. But when they re reunite, she becomes to doubt herself and realize that she's quite in love with him and so she becomes to regret her decision and so the, the story develops when they reunite and it's the, all, the, all the intricacies between different characters and how she's torn between what other people think and what herself really thinks so this is quite a good read I really enjoy this one and I highly recommend then at number 9 we have Black Matter by Blake Crouch. This is a, a book about uh, par parallel worlds. So it begins to present, her, to present us a couple that is married and has a little boy. And he is a scientist. He is invited by a friend to go to a bar and celebrate the... Um, I think... I'm not sure... Um, what the friend accomplished but it's something like um, a scientific uh, paper and the, our main character goes there and celebrates with his friend his accomplishment and he starts to doubt his life choices and wonders what, he w what would be of his career if he uh, hadn't met his wife or haven't married her, or even have their child. And then when he tries to come back home, something happens and he is transported by a, a parallel world where the life as he knows it is completely changed. And he is, he, after that moment, is trying to come back to his old life. So the way that the story develops after that is so addicting. The story, it's really fast, fast paced. The author makes really short phrases, really short, like three to four uh, words. You will go through the book like a lightning and you just want to know what happens next, how, he'll, how he will be able to get out of there. So it's totally, totally addicting. I really enjoy this book. The only thing that I didn't quite enjoy was the ending. I thought that the ending was really convenient, you know? So the, the justification that he provides the readers is a bit dubious, in my opinion. So... That's the only thing that I have to say about the book. The rest of it, it's totally addicting. Really, really recommend you read this book. So, at number 8, 
I have Letters to a Young Poet by Rainer Maria Rilke. In here we have um, response letters from uh, Rilke with uh, uh, a fan. I don't remember, I think it's Rufus. I think it's Rufus, I'm, I'm not sure. But here we have the response letters from Rainer Maria Rilke to a fan of his that is writing him and ask for advice. This is so, so heartwarming. Rilke uh, responds to him in a such polite way, so um, endearing. Um, he almost refuses to give real advice. He, th he talks a lot about how uh, Rufus has to uh, do his own journey because Rufus is trying to get advice fro from Wilk as a fellow writer because he wants to become a writer too, a poet and uh, is trying to get advice from his idol and Wilk almost refuses to do so he always talks, talks about how he has to try to write from his own heart and try to um, find his own voice and it's so endearing you will love to read this book I think we can extract many lessons even for our own, own lives even if we don't want to become a writer I think this is transversal to all any person can take something from this book and something that I became curious was to know um, to read the letters that Rufus wrote to Wilk because in the version that I have here it's only the letters from Wilk so the letters with a response and not the letters from Rufus so I'll be really curious to read what Rufus has to say so really highly recommend this one then in number seven I have Do Android Dream of Electric Ship by Philip K. Dick also known as Blade Runner Blade Runner was the movie based on this book we are in the future in a punk kind of world and here we have a detective that is trying to catch some androids that escape from Mars they escape to the earth because there they were they were like a bit like slaves so they want to escape it and they come to earth and our main character is trying to catch them so here we have a discussion about the the boundaries with technology YA how we can distinguish what is human from what is a robot and what being a human means so aren't androids also permitted to live a life as they want to why would they be different from us in what ways they are different just because they don't have a body like ours just because they, they were built by us so that's kind of the questions that the, this book raises it also talks about how humans uh, think they are superior to all, speci all species so how we have to value more a human life than any other species and so this transpositions to the androids that their life is not so valuable as ours this is a bizarre book, I thought but it's quite um, addicting as well I thought that the way the story goes is so intricate, is so reflexive and it's quite interesting to see how our main character is almost disconnected with the, his life and how the technology that is that is available it almost 
numbs him and it's quite beautiful to see how Philip K. Dick constructs the story with so many layers. You here have many discussions but not direct, you know, so you will be able to um, see all the things that I'm talking about by reading this book but not in the direct form. So it's quite beautiful the way that Philip K. Dick was able to do that. For fans from science, science fiction, and even if you do, don't really read science fiction, I think this book is quite interesting, it's quite different, the story is um, very peculiar, but I really enjoyed it and I highly recommend you to see it. And the movie is also so beautiful, the cinematography is spectacular. And um, it's a little different from the book, the story of the movie, as they almost are, but it's also quite beautiful. And, and the movie that came out in 2017, Blade Runner 2049, from Denis Villeneuve, it's so, so, so beautiful. I love that movie. It's one of my favorites, like, for life. That's one of uh, my favorite science fiction movies. It's so beautiful, the cinematography is so well made. I also highly advise you to see that movie. And please, if you, see, if you saw it, tell me what you thought. And if you'll be seeing it for my recommendation, let me know. In number six, I have I Am Legend by Richard Madsen. This is a book about an uh, epidemic that uh, affects all humankind and it's globalized and how it destroy it and how it, it destroys our species and we accompany one man that as far as we know it's the last man still alive Peop the epidemic that affects um, humans transforms them into vampires at least of what we thought is a vampire and we accompany him trying to find more about this virus and trying to protect himself from the attacks because they attack people so he's not the only man alive but he's the only man sane as far as we know it and so we accompany his pain of being alone and uh, some, in some uh, moments the story regresses a bit and we see how was his life um, before the pandemic and then at the end of the book uh, we find out that it, he's perhaps not alone and the story develops after that it's um, till the moment we find that to, to the end of the book is a short period and the, the ending is quite interesting because we have a um, perception of an evolution and how the humankind will continue after that and how perhaps the human life as we know it is obsolete. So this book is a delight to read. It's a really fast read as well. You will be looking at yourself and looking at mankind and how we will it will be it will be if something like that will, will happen how life will become and how perhaps sad and lonely people would feel but the end is is quite interesting i really enjoyed it i thought it was a five stars for me in number five i had dune, dune messiah by frank herbert this is the second book by Dune series. I read Dune in 2020 and I really enjoyed it. Five stars for me. I already talked about it in my wrap up of uh, December in uh, the movies. I went and saw the movie and I, I talk about a little bit about the book there. And in Dune Messiah we have um, a gap of 12 years between the first book and this one so the book is quite i'm not going to say much about this one because this is the second installation so of a book series 
so I don't want to give you any spoilers. I would really advise you to read it. I think this is a fantastic series. It's so fantastic that in fourth place I have Children of Dune by Frank Herbert. That is the third installation of the Dune series. And in here we have a nine year lapse between the second book. And in this book, Children of Dune, we accompany all children. So they are nine years old because we end up um, Dune Messiah with uh, they as a baby, as babies. And then in Children of Dune, we have them as nine years old and we accompany their journey. So it's quite interesting. The way that Frank Herbert uh, composes the text is very beautiful. Some people don't like it, but I really enjoy the way that he describes the thoughts of the characters. Sometimes he spoils some things, so he will um, enunciate certain machinations that are happening before they happen. So in a way that spoils the story, but I really enjoyed it because we have a more deep perception of all characters' thoughts and how they are being justified of their actions. And I, I think that is quite interesting, quite different. I never read a book with that type of description. So I really enjoy this one. These two, I mean. In number three, we have Dr. Faustus by Thomas Mann. I love Thomas Mann re uh, writing. I think he's so elegant, so eloquent. His writing is so beautiful. It's, it just demonstrated how this man was intelligent. This was my first book from this author. This was also a reading project that I accompany. I re read this in a joint, re uh, joint reading. So we take this quite slow. I was able to read this one in two months. So that was quite a time to uh, devour this book. I had time to process and reread some parts. So that was quite nice. And in this book we have we have a man, Serenus, Serenus, I don't know how to pronounce it, talking about Adrian Leverkun, his friend, his dear friend, that he's a musician and how Serenus talks about, gives us a bit of a biography of Adrian and talks about his life since he was a boy to the day that he died. And through this journey, we accompany how Adrian was a bit cold and a bit distant, but still how Serena's loved him and wanted to be near him at all time. This book is also a reflection of the Second World War, because Thomas Mann was a critic of Germany of that time. He was anti-Nazi. He was a vocal uh, figure that um, criticized what Germany was doing at that time and this book was written in that period and here we have reflection how Germany was taken in a way was taken by the devil because in here we have the Foster's myth that is a story about a medic that uh, makes a deal with the devil so he can be more knowledgeable and more powerful and here we have that happening with Adrian Leverkun so he can, as he's a musician, he wants to be more inspired he wants to make a great work that becomes known by all um, through history and he achieves that, but it comes with a price. And that's what happens with Adrian's life. And in here we have a um, reflection through the Faustus myth, uh, the way that Germany was caught by that as well, and how it became a nation 
known by atrocities. So this is quite an in interesting read because it also has um, many layers. In here we have uh, reflections through politics, religion and also war and what that meant to Germany. So if you are um, afraid of endeavoring in this reading, I would advise you to not be. Give it time, do it with calm and from my um, Portuguese speakers uh, viewers, I will advise you to go and see Livros da Paloma or follow Paloma Lima in YouTube. She, she has a playlist of the, the reading of this book and I think it will be quite helpful, helpful for you to accompany her videos and because she gives depth ex explanations of uh, each chapter so it, it's quite helpful and I think uh, the reading of this book will become more easier. So there you go. Then in number two, I have Susan, Sto Susan Sontag, The Rolling Stone Interview. The Complete Rolling Stone Interview by Jonathan Cott. This is, as the title says, an interview with Susan T Sontag. This was my first uh, endeavor with uh, Susan Sontag. This was a reading proposition by a booktuber that I follow, Paloma Lima. <laughs> this was quite an experience. I didn't know who Susan Sontag was and she was a American intellectual from the 20th century and we, with this interview we can, we can see in what aspects this woman was knowledgeable about. She has a quite open mind for her time, you know, and as a, as a woman, it was really enlightening to see how um, she was open and the things that she was interested about. She was an author for mostly non-fiction and um, I didn't read any other, uh, I'm sorry, I read Another book by her, um, Essays book, and I'm eager to read more of her work. And I have here some quotes that I want to share with you. Susan Sontag saw things differently. She says, I like the interview form, and I like it because I like conversation, I like dialogue, and I know that a lot of my thinking is a product of conversation. In a way, the, art, the hardest thing about writing is that you are alone and have to set up a conversation with yourself, which is fundamentally a natural activity. I like talking to people. It's what makes me not a recluse. And conversations gives me a chance to know what I think. I don't want to know about the audience because it's an abstraction, but I certainly want to know what any individual thinks and that requires a face-to-face -face meeting. And also she talks about how the pop culture is sometimes um, criticized and seen in bad eyes by the intellectuals and she doesn't do that. She embraces the pop culture. She has a quote here that for some reason I didn't mark. When she talks about if she has to choose between, between something and Dostoevsky, a popular uh, thing, popular singer and Dostoevsky, she, if she was obliged to choose, because she doesn't want to choose, but she, if she was obliged, she would choose Dostoevsky, of course, but what she says is that she doesn't have to choose. So she can appreciate popular culture and also appreciate classical music, for instance. So she can do both. So, so that was quite interesting. I found that um, for 
the era that she lived in that was quite progressive and for all this interview you will find uh, many books to uh, refer to so I have some things that I want to read one now because I read this book and yeah overall this interview is a breeze of fresh air it's so enlightening I really like this and I really highly recommend you to read it and know Susan Sontag I think this is a real good way to get to know her before you read other works by her and the number one I have on writing by Stephen King I never read anything by this author I have a project in my mind that I want to read his, his books in a chronological way but that's something for October I think so it's not for now and in this book we have a little biography, autobiography from the author he talks about his childhood, his teenage years and his first years in adulthood and he had a quite sad history in his childhood uh, they passed through quite difficulties then we have him writing since he was a child so the writing thing was um, a passion that he had uh, since his young years and then we have him explain how it was to write his first book and how it was the um, publishing journey and it's it was quite endearing to see his journey through all the, the difficulties that he was having in his life because he was working he was working in a, a laundry shop and at the same time he was writing for journals and writing his first book so it's an empowerful uh, life he had and that's what's come through empowerment then we have chapters about the art of writing so he talks about a lot of things that he thinks writers should be uh, aware about things that he doesn't enjoy reading and forms and grammatical forms that he thinks are not um, adequate and other things that he finds that work best I don't want to become a writer at least right now that's not on my plans but this uh, reading was so interesting even if you don't want to become a writer I would highly advise you to read this book because you will have an insight on the mind of a writer and as perficuous as Stephen King is so it's quite um, funny to understand and to uh, find out some things that he doesn't find necessary he gives us many examples of analogies some things from his childhood and lessons that he learned with his family and he, tra he transfers that to examples as how to write better he gives an example of a story that his uncle was trying to fix something and he, he only needed and that he only needed one tool to fix what he wanted but instead he took the whole box of tools with him and Stephen asked why he took the box and he told him that we never know the tools that we are going to need and that's the example that it transfers to the writing that the, a writer has to have many tools with him so he can be prepared to any occasion make use of them he also talks about how he uh, fought against alcohol and drugs he, he talks about how he wrote some books of him and he doesn't remember writing them because he was inebriated and he talks how he overcame it and how that affected his family life and how the relationships improved after he gave up on, on that at the end of the book he also talks about the accident that he had he was ran over 
he was between life and death and how that shaped shaped him and the experience that it was the recovery from the accident so it's quite interesting this book it has a panoply of many things so i highly recommend it was my favorite book from last year and maybe one of my favorite books of all of all time so yeah now some two honorable mentions first i have the strange case of dr jekyll and mr hyde to summarize really quick we are presented with a medic that is an investigative medic and he is trying to do scientific experiences and the as the story progresses we find out that he succeeds and it has to do with uh, duality so that's the only thing that i'm going to say i think we should do, you should go to this reading with any knowledge at all of what the story is about i think i think the best way is to dive in and know nothing so don't look for reviews because we you may catch a spoiler and that that ruins the story i knew the story already through a movie called mary riley that is also a book a book that was inspired in this story so that's it then the other one that i'm going to mention is a manga monster i have here volume 1 This is the only book that I have at least till now from this series. This is a um a series with nine volumes and in this book we accompany a surgeon that he works in an hospital and he becomes aware that there is a discrimination between patients. One day he is preparing himself for a surgery of a little boy and the director of the a hospital goes and talk to him and asks him to go to leave the boy and go do a surgery on a mayor i think it is a mayor and he refuses and does the surgery on the boy as, and as a consequence the mayor dies and then we accompany the tumble on his career because the director demotes him and so uh, we accompany him a, a few years later being face to face with this uh, boy now a man and how mysterious and in strange circumstances that it happens it's quite um, interesting this story it's really uh, intricate and mysterious and quite fascinating the situation that the doctor is put in is quite bizarre so the reviews that i saw of this book of this manga were all quite favorable for my in my opinion the reviews are right This manga is really 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 good and I highly recommend it. As you can see the art It's quite beautiful and it's really a fun read, really easy, really fast. You'll be devouring this book. So that's it. That is my 10 favorites from 2021. I hope you have enjoyed it. Please let me know in the comments your favorite books, which books became your favorite last year. I would love to know. Please subscribe to my channel if you aren't subscribed already. Leave a like. I would love you to see your feedback and see if you are liking the videos. Follow me on Instagram. I'll be posting there whenever I have a book review to do or any other thing. And that's it. I hope you have enjoyed it.